Hi everybody, this is Stuart Barlow. Welcome to this second video, which is going to look at a different aspect of the talk that I was going to do at the Old Low Light over Easter about the 19th century architect John Dobson. This time I'm going to look at the houses Dobson designed in North Shields, which has taken a bit of detective work involving maps, directories, looking at newspaper notices and old photographs in North Shields Library as none of the houses Dobson designed in North Shields are still standing. Dobson's first house in North Shields was Waterville House in 1815, just off what is now Coach Lane, circled here in red. It was a square house, without buildings, or wings extending out on its eastern side, and it was set in its own landscaped grounds, with a large water feature. It was built for George Rippon, proprietor of the Waterville Waterworks, who continued to live there for many years as a well-established member of North Shields society. Over the years, North Shields encroached into the grounds of Waterville House, and the house, circled here in red, became part of Stanley Street West. We can see that Dobson used brickwork for the external elevations of the house, with stone coins at the corners and stone surrounds to the doors and windows. Waterville House was destroyed in a bombing raid in 1941. In 1819, Dobson designed two more houses in North Shields. One of them was West Churton House, built just west of the Pineapple Inn in Churton, where John Dobson was born. It was a large house set in its own landscaped grounds and was described as a plain and commodious building of brick. Sounds similar to the design of Waterville House, doesn't it? It was built for Michael Robson of Bells, Robson & Co who operated the Wall's End and Burden Main Pits. By the start of the 1850s, Michael Robson's son, John Robson, was now living there with his family. And 20 years later it was occupied by John Headley, who owned draper's shops in North Shields, on Howard Street and Union Street. West Churton House was clearly a house built for the well-to-do of North Shields. It was demolished in 1937, and now lies under the site of Norham High School. The other Dobson House, built in North Shields in 1819, was Preston Villa, also known as Preston House. It was built on the edge of Preston Village, a simple square house set in a large garden which was accessed off Preston Road. The house was built for John Fenwick, who only lived there for three years until his death in 1822, and then it was occupied by three more generations of the Fenwick family up until the start of the 20th century. Just after the Second World War, the ATC took it over, and many will remember the Spitfire located outside the house, shown on this photograph. A local history of Preston Village described Preston House as a substantial stone-built villa, but some photographs appear to show a brick house. If any of you, any of you remember the house, let me know whether you remember it being a stone or a brick house. The house was demolished in 1967 to make way for the development of houses now called Woodlands, although its gateposts still remain on Preston Road. Thirty years later, John Dobson designed another house in North Shields. This was Hilton Lodge, built in the early 1850s for Thomas Hughes. It was a large house with a drawing room, dining room, a library, nine bedrooms and a hot and cold water bath, plus a kitchen and a housekeeper's bedroom. It was surrounded by what were described as pleasure grounds and gardens, in addition, there were stables, a coach house with harness room, a dog kennel, even cow buyers and poultry houses. Clearly, a substantial house for a wealthy owner. After Thomas Hughes left the house in 1856, it was occupied Thomas Carr 
Leach, the first town clerk of the Borough of Tynemouth. The substantial mansion later became part of St Joseph's Primary School, but all that remains today are these gateposts on Coach Lane. As none of the houses Dobson designed in North Shields remained standing, I went to look at Doxford Hall in Northumberland, built in 1819, to get a better impression of what a Dobson house looked like. Doxford Hall is considered to be the most impressive of Dobson's early years. It is a similar sized house to those built in North Shields, but it is stone faced all round, a step up in quality and expense. I also got a glimpse of the type of interior spaces Dobson designed at last time as in this view from the entrance hall of Doxford Hall flowing into its staircase. Well, that's all for the moment, and when I'm able to do my talk at the Old Low Light, I hope you'll come along and find out more about these houses and what Dobson nearly did to Seaton Delaver Hall and his housing for workers at Northumberland Dock, as well as the other buildings John Dobson designed in the North Shields and Tymouth area. In my next video, I'll look at what Dobson was doing in Tymouth. And in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, and look after yourselves. Bye for now.